Here in part two, we're actually going to implement uh, two different methods of defense in depth to both detect and prevent zero-day attacks such as this. We're going to do this by starting with a Tofino security appliance, which is basically a transparent firewall type device that's going to be placed in line between our vulnerable server and the network. We're also going to use the central management platform or the CMP to interact and configure our firewall based on those nodes that we see in our particular architecture. And I'm going to end with a nice little extra to our solution which will put an out-of-band intrusion detection system based on SNORT in our architecture to add further uh, layers of defense so that you're able to detect when impending attacks could be launched against your control system. What we have here is the Tofino CMP application where I've put together a very simple network architecture that consists of a control network and a control demilitarized zone connected to some internal firewall device. This particular network happens to be configured in the address space that my other nodes that I've previously shown you are within this 172.16.252 subnet. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to launch a discovery scan on this particular network to obtain all of those nodes that happen to exist within our particular architecture. And what I'm looking for is the newly commissioned Tofino security appliance that I have put in the architecture. At this point, the CMP has discovered our new Tofino, which is connected in line between our factory link server and client. I'm now going to drag it up into the control network provide some basic information and turn on the communication between the CMP and the Tofino security appliance. This will allow us to do further configuration and build rules. So at this point the CMP is establishing communication. All that's required at this point is to have at least a single IP address for a device that's on the other side of the Tofino appliance. Once we have established communications, we're going to go in and add some of the software modules required to build our rules. We do this through loadable security modules. In this particular instance, I'm going to install a generic firewall LSM, which will allow us to create a variety of rules uh, based on uh, source and destination um, IP addresses. I'm also going to install the Secure Asset Management LSM, which will allow us to do some further uh, identification and configuration of other devices which happen to be a part of our control system. So once we see this, we now have our Tofino device. What I can now do is look at the assets that have been discovered, and inside this assets, we're going to see our client and server computer. So here's 182. 182 happens to represent our factory link server, so I'm going to drag it inside the Tofino device and I'm going to give it a name factory link server. And that's its IP address. The subnet mask for this is 255. And I'm going to take the client and I'm going to drag the client above the security appliance on the control system network. I drag this up right here. Again, I make sure the IP address subnet mask is correct. And now we have a very simple uh, architecture here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my Tofino device and the primary contact of who's below it is going to be our factory link server. And I'm going to apply that change and close this window. Now over in the lower right is where we have several pre-built protocols that we can now start to add to our rule. Now if you remember earlier on our server, which I will call back up. Okay, so when we look on our server, 
we're able to retype in our netstat command and we can look at our 182 which is our server and these are the communications that are taking place between the server and the client here's our OPC at the 10,000 range 8,000 is actually used by factory link uh, for the licensing component and then we also see some 135 which is used by classic OPC as the uh, RPC endpoint mapper uh, which is used to actually determine this number um, in the initial communication and then we see a couple other ports and services that are being used here um, looks like a couple um, services are accessing the client here on 3799 so let's go back to our CMP and I'm gonna initially start off over here on the right and create a few uh, groups based on what we know so I'm going to create a few factory link groups the first being port 8000 TCP for our licensing I'm also going to create a group for our OPC I'm also going to create a group for the web client on factory link which uses a non-standard port and I'm gonna leave the rest blank so we can kind of experiment and see what else we need to do so now all we do is we simply take these groups and we drag them into our server okay first of all we need to address NetBIOS in this case because it is used uh, between the clients and server within the factory link environment so I'm gonna come over here on the firewall and I'm gonna take my NetBIOS TCP and UDP which is if we take our cursor over here we can see that it's TCP and UDP ports 137 through 139 I'm also gonna come down here and I'm gonna bring over SMB which is used for file sharing and the client does communicate with the server for exchange of graphic files now let's build some of the communication requirements the first thing I'm gonna bring up is OPC classic which uses port 135 which is the RPC endpoint mapper and then I'm gonna bring in these factory link custom groups that we just built so let's drag over the four factory link groups the license on port 8000 the OPC range that I custom configured and the web let's apply these and now a very powerful feature of the Tofino security appliance which makes it perfectly suited for SCADA environments is the ability to put this in what's called the test mode and by doing so it will actually run all of the packets through the rules yet it will not block or drop any of these packets and what we're going to see down here on the bottom is we're gonna see now the generation of a bunch of alerts which would signify uh, packets that would not pass any of those pre-configured rules so I'm gonna make sure that my filtering here is so that we only show exceptions I'm gonna maximize the screen and what we can now see is we can now start to see communication that is occurring that's outside of those rules that we previously built and sure enough if you remember 3799 was one of the rules that we found or one of the service ports that we found when we did a netstat so I'm gonna take this guy right here and I'm simply gonna right click on it and I'm gonna say create rule and by looking at that packet it knows the source and destination and the service that's being used I'm not sure about this service right now so I'm gonna flag this as a factory link service and I'm gonna call it 3799 and I'm gonna do some further investigation after we commission this since we know these are valid packets I want to make sure that everything uh, is allowed to pass that needs to pass so once that change is implemented I'm going to clear these alerts by doing a control all and acknowledge and as you can see 
we now have a very clean alert summary, which means that the system is, is operating. We have a pretty uh, secure implementation here uh, between our client and server. Now realize that the only people that can communicate is between client and server. So if we come back to our client and we start an actual graphic, you'll see that the graphic operates according to uh, plan. It's exchanging data via OPC with the server and everything is functioning accordingly. Now, if you recall that Tofino has not been put into operational mode, it's still in test mode, which means if I come back here to my attack server, I'm still able to run my attack against that vulnerable VRN service. So there's the boot INI dump. And sure enough, if I come back over here to my Tofino, we're going to see right down here that particular exception. Well, now let's turn our Tofino security appliance into the operational mode. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take it from test mode to operational mode. So now it's actually going to process the rules and drop packets which do not have an appropriate rule set. So as this comes through, let me clear up all of these. And we're now going to go back to our attack server. And we're going to try to launch that same attack against the vulnerable VRN service on TCP port 7579. And sure enough, the firewall has prevented the attack. So we saw that the Tofino security appliance successfully blocked that packet from occurring. But what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the last piece of this demonstration and look at how we can implement simple intrusion detection systems on control system networks to flag us when attempts are made at launching these particular attacks. What I'm using here is something called Security Onion, which is a distribution put together by a gentleman named Doug Burks. And it contains pre-configured IDS systems based on both Snort and the new Sericata implement or being developed uh, through a research grant from the Department of Homeland Security. So once I start this up, it's got a real-time dashboard that will allow me to view Snort logs. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to launch that same attack using our vulnerable VRN service against the server that you previously saw blocked. And sure enough, when I launch that particular attack, the IDS system, even though that packet was blocked by the Tofino security appliance, this particular rule is being generated in here, which shows, if I click the show rule and show data packet, and of course what we can do is we can give ourselves some more room, you can see right here, that this has happened to look for communication that's not between a valid SCADA client and a SCADA server across some specific ports. And what this does is this will flag alerts even when the TCP three-way handshake has not yet been established, allowing us to have the ability to look into and see when potential attacks could be imminent upon our control system. I've now gone back to the Tofino security appliance and taken it out of the operational mode and put it into the test mode so that you can see how this intrusion detection system actually picks up the attack. So this new alert right here is actually one based on information developed jointly with Digital Bond and uh, Nitro Security as part of the Quick Draw IDS signatures, which allows me to do content inspection on the packet that was being targeted at the Factory Link server and generate an alert based on someone trying to exploit this particular vulnerability. A great deal of the research presented during this demonstration was the result of several white papers authored by myself and Eric Byers at Tofino Security. I encourage you to visit the Tofino Security website and read these articles to understand additional mitigation strategies that can be used in protecting, protecting industrial control systems. 
I thank you for your time and encourage you to visit our websites at skatahacker.com and tofinosecurity.com to learn more of how various security methods and controls can be used to further secure our industrial control systems responsible for protecting critical infrastructure. Thank you.